you know, when, when you talk about something and, and some people kind of understand, or you'll even say, Hey, it really hurts me when you do this. And people say, well, give me an example. And I feel like <laughs> you, we just, we talked and talked and then about how we need to ask better questions. You get better answers. And we're talking about how to connect and how to communicate. <laughs> and I asked you a question that you said, no one's ever asked me that before. And so what did it do for you? You got to open up, you got to reflect and learn about yourself. I got to learn so much about you. And so now I feel more connected to you. I'm sure anybody listening feels more connected to you, your authentic you and your heart. And so in journalism, we show, we don't tell. So we're showing, not just telling. So it's so beautiful what just happened. And that was relatively easy. Granted, this is my background. I'm like a professional. No, I was going to say, you're like you really will. good. <laughs> and I, 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 Capturing I, the emotions. <laughs> It's that's my, we all have our gifts, right? There's plenty of things yeah. I, I am terrible at. So I think it's, that's a, a point too, is really, and I love it. This is my favorite thing to do and talk about. And I'm so lit up. And then you just see the impact that you're able to have on someone where they feel so seen and, and maybe stop asking questions that make us feel like all we are is what we do for a living. What do you do or, or something like that? So um, I'm sorry for what you went through, but there was someone again, as the universe would have it, I saw it just yesterday and it's so perfect for this. It was, it's some billionaire. And instead of giving the, vi the, the business advice to that normal stuff you hear, he said something like, I wish you a lot of pain and suffering because that will teach you and give you resilience. And if you wanna become a billionaire or a success, whatever that is to you, resilience is the number one yes. thing that will get you there. And so, I'm excited to see where you go with your success because you got the beautiful gift of resilience through this, you know, upsetting time or, or challenging time. I, I appreciate that. And I, I'll say too, like, that's not, it's very hard for me to talk about that time just because um, one, I don't, it is my, like, I had a horrible experience. It's the worst time of my life. I should be allowed to talk about it, but I also don't want to start drama. Like I don't, I I'm not name calling, like it happened. The things that happened happened and I moved past them and I'm at peace and, and, um, you know, I, it doesn't invalidate it though. And so, you know, finding someone like you who can ask that question and give me the comfort to actually be answering it and be comfortable answering it because it, it is, it's a hard place to go back to. So I actually appreciate you being the person to ask me that as opposed to maybe someone else that I, I don't think um, I don't think I'd have anyone on here that had that would ask that question in bad faith, but you know, in a in a less kind of like genuine way, mm -hmm. because they probably wouldn't have had a good answer, or I would have said no, not answer. Or, <laughs> or you may even, or I think the way that people sometimes ask anything, you can feel their judgment, even if that isn't their intention, but you you mm -hmm. feel that underlying judgment, or almost wanting you to act or, or speak out of character, but just where for me is always like, there's no right or wrong answers. And yes, you can say no, but it's just, it's, that's a humanity in me. I, I think like, gosh, I, I, I can only or can't even imagine because it is so public. And also, you know, we all have things that we can teach. I would love a teaching from you or, or a show about, cause something that I still struggle with that I don't even like to admit, cause I'm a grown ass woman. But I still, and it's, but I know where it comes from, from childhood and how I was raised and a nice Midwestern girl from Ohio and all of those things and what it means to be a nice girl that, and I've seen Lady Gaga and Taylor Swift and all these superstars speak about this same thing. We're all like, you just need to be nice. And so all of us even, and all of those huge celebrities have spoken about this. And then you see the, the change in their career where you can tell that they don't really care anymore and they're creating even better art. But even mm -hmm. I'm getting a little emotional talking about it. I still maybe worry or care what people think of me because at my core, I am a genuinely nice person. And when I act out of character, which I did before we hit record with the, the landlord showing up unannounced while I'm trying to record and I, and not being heard and having to raise my voice, I beat myself up about it. And I'm like, why do you care what this person who doesn't respect your boundaries thinks, for instance, or anybody, but I still do care. And I still, I have an issue with how I'm perceived and I hate even admitting it and I'm working through it. And maybe that's part of this show too, is an act of releasing that. But 
I also haven't been in your situation and you were able to even do it in that situation. Well, I, I want to, I have a question. I'm going to follow up with you on that. But before that, when I was, when I first decided that I was going to go on the show, when they cast me and I actually, up until the day before I was like, am I really doing this? I don't think I'm really doing this, but um, you know, my whole mindset was like, I don't really care what people think of me at this point because I act with integrity and I'm doing what I think is right. And so I'm not going to care what the internet says. I'm not going to care. And by and large, I didn't, but there are moments where I had to for my relationship or I had to for, um, you know, cause people send you stuff and it's like, you're kind of like, you know, hit in the face with it sometimes. And for me, it was, I don't really care what people outside of my life think about me. So when people in my life would be like, Oh, like you were, you know, you were just you, but on TV or the people um, in my life when going through that bad time were reassuring instead of, you know, questioning um, or whatever it was. So what I think is a good takeaway from that. And then I have a question I want to ask you is what matter. It does, it's not that it doesn't matter what people say about you, but I do, I do believe by and large, like I say, I'm unapologetically myself, like, like me or hate me. I, I don't care. Like you have that decision. You can make that decision. I'm not going to try and force you to like me. I'm not going to try and force you to dislike me. I am who I am. I'm doing the best I can and I'm trying to get better. So if that's not your vibe, I'm not your vibe. So my question then to you is, do you concern, because you're a public figure, you're about to put yourself out there or you just put yourself out there by the time this comes out with your new podcast, you're doing real work, real journalism work, you're bringing real people. And my guess is your circle of whether it's networking or professionals or friends, that's going to grow. But what that's going to do is that's going to grow with people who appreciate you and appreciate the work you're doing and appreciate your compassion and and appreciate your empathy and your your smart. So do you and sorry, one last thought, but when you were broadcasting, I would imagine that your circle was big, but it's competitive. I've learned that from our friend Leverett, mm -hmm. that it's very competitive in broadcasting. And so it's almost like you're not going to have those genuine same connections you get podcasting is my my belief but um do you think do you think it's because or do you think it's possible that your struggles were because you were in this inauthentic industry on tv in front of a lot of people who can now by the way easily get upset by you and come send you a social media post or talk about you in the comment section without having you know, like 20 years ago, they'd have to find a way to write you a letter, right? Like, so is it those strangers? Is it when people in your life or was, is it colleagues? Is there any trends there that you notice of the kind of people that you, you get upset if they don't like you or you don't please them? That was a I, long question. Sorry. No, it's, <laughs> it's good. And there's so many, there's so many layers to that. And I, so one thing that, that came to mind is when you are on, on TV, on, on any capacity, in a certain way, and you know this, while you're still your authentic self, and for you, luckily, there was a little, like you were same on and off camera, and I am to a degree too, but on camera, you know, a, a, a lot of times I was like a bit more stoic because there's there's words you can't say, you'll get sued, you'll get fired, for instance. There's so many things you can't say more and more now in this climate and culture, so you have to, you know, play this role. And as I, I like to say, I've, I'm the dog and pony show. You're the puppet. You're the personality more than the person. So, mm -hmm. and I think of my, my TV career, I, I received great feedback. Nothing ever about my journalists mean ever. The comments I got, <laughs> really the only mean comments I've, I've gotten in my career, funny, funnily enough, were about, it's, it's like appearance and in particular, yeah my hair. And I laugh because like I was a swimmer for 17 years. So my hair was jacked up. And then I've gone through all sorts of phases. My hair is very difficult. I think it looks great now, but only because it's professional. Looks great. Thank you. But it's like, you know, the texture was criticized, the cut, the cut, it was mainly the color. And all I thought was like, you're not even, you're dissing my colorist and I suck at hair and certainly never going to color it myself. So you're dissing my colorist, first of all, but just that that's what you choose to pick out. And now I think Nick, one of the number one compliments I get from strangers and friends alike 
is everyone loves my hair. I get more compliments on my hair than anything, which is ironic because that's what I was always criticized for. So I think maybe what I'm, I'm speaking to now is that when I'm now just fully, because I've done the work, showing up as Kate the person, yes. more so than Kate the personality, and I'm talking about really, really personal topics that even friends or family members have never heard or don't know anything about. And I'm sharing it not just privately with you um, in a Zoom or something, or even at dinner, but sharing it where anyone in the world could click and listen to it and crying and breaking down and talking about things where I'm, I could be judged or maybe someone won't work with me or date me because of something, but being like, okay, like you said, those aren't my people. So I'm kind of coaching myself in the moment. Those aren't my people. And thinking about the people, whether it's one person or 1 million people who hear what I've shared that I like am scared for the episode to even come out, but hear what I've said and they're able to do something positive with their lives, even if it's just like feel emotion deeply mm -hmm. and then make a change from that feeling then I've done my job and that's why I'm doing it. So as I say that, now I'm in a place of like, I don't care, or this person may not like me or hate my hair or hate whatever, or say all the blonde, pretty, white privilege stuff. Yeah, guess what? I think it's that thing too, when you know who you are, no one can ever say anything. It's like, yeah, I am white. Thank you for thinking I'm pretty. I am blonde and I am privileged. What else do you got? What else What else do you got? You know well, what by I mean? The way <laughs> By the way, you you got a lottery on the white part and the pretty part, and you could have that. That's the thing. Yeah. I, I agree with the privilege stuff uh, to an extent, but at the same time, like we're not choosing choosing uh, before we come into this world or conceived what we do. But whatever. I even brought that up, but those are no, no, no. But it's a good yeah. point. I, those are things yeah, that I it, hear, and then I'm like, am I supposed to be offended by this? Am I supposed to? not like my race? Am I supposed to feel bad about what other white folks are doing that is racist? Mm -hmm. You know, and so for me, I just know that it, we all have our different life assignments in our own activism work. And for me, mine is more in the suicide prevention and mental health arena. That's a huge life assignment based on my personal experience where, and, and, and certainly doing all my work on, um, how to be non-racist and all that. But in terms of like doing activism around racism and DEI, that isn't my assignment. There's a, so mm -hmm. we can't be like, we can't take on every issue and, and I'm not going to try. And as I, I remember writing a, a, a article and it was about um, African-American um, people and, and that whole topic. And, you know, there was lots of comments and feedback there, a lot of positive. And some people said things, I feel like the negative comments there, there was one man who said, but what about the Native Americans, Kate? They were the first ones, blah, 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 blah. And so, and I was so proud of myself because I didn't get triggered. I didn't get upset. Mm -hmm. I And I, I hit respond and I said his name, whatever his name was. And I said, what a great article for you to write. And so I just put it back on, on people. <laughs> like, oh my, you're clearly passionate about this. Like, what? and I said, please, and I've done that too. And it was genuine and it was kind to a bunch of people. And I'd said, oh my gosh, I would love to see an article on that. Please tag me or send it to me when it's published. Because those people that are writing the comments for the most part are not writing articles. No. They're not putting themselves out there to be ridiculed. They're just doing the ridiculing. They're keyboard activists and those aren't that helpful. They're not that helpful. But I, I, I think that's, first of all, brava, epic response. That's, that's great. I love that. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Eyes Wide Open. If you enjoy the show, the best way to support us is by sharing or dropping a review. For more information and content, check out engagewithnick.com or find me on Instagram at nthompson513. Don't go through life blind. Do the work so you can show up in the world with your eyes wide open.